All right, we're here for the Crash Course on Stars reading group. This is HD Before Bed with your host, Jonah Dempsey, and I'm going to be reading from Jan van den Berg's Crash Course on Stars. I'm really excited uh, for this book and for this weekly opportunity to read more from it. So let's see where we end up. The stars and the nodes. The stars represent the foundation upon which the life, the profile, the cross is lived. It's the stage where life takes place. It is what gives us life. And they're actually nothing. Just two holes in the sky. It's the umbilical cord, the escape tunnel. Your connectivity to that which will always be greater than you. The nodes align us, allowing us to move with minimal resistance so that it can enhance the quality of life. And also it establishes what we are to see, to experience, to meet. It's all in the nodes. The nodes represent the alignment and shaping of the form. Through the nodes, we are aligned with the totality. So when you're thinking about influencing a life, you have to begin to think in terms of the nodes. It is through this nodal relationship that you be begin to learn about what your relationship is to any given star. For Ra, the only way to see a specific relationship in someone's design to a star is that the star has to be conjunct one of their nodes. And obviously, wherever that happens to be, you can see the subtleties and the possibilities of planetary affiliations. All other attempts of doing interpretations of the stars shouldn't be what it's about. But of course, he confirms that everything influences everything. So I remember last, last time when we looked at this, um, I had kind of... I was actually hoping to be able to show you how to uh, discern where the the stars are. I mean, where the where the nodes are for you. So I think we may actually be able to do that. Let me um, give me one moment here, and I'm just going to go to um, I'm going to pull up a copy of the Rave I Ching. I hope you have the Rave I Ching. Uh, if you don't, you can find it. It's available online to purchase, and it's floating around various places. And so what I'm going to do is actually um, I'm going to open that up here momentarily. And here we go. And then uh, let me just switch over this, this graphic here. OK. So we have the complete Ravi Ching here. And what you'll find is the Ravi Ching actually has in it um, the astrological positions. This is what you need. This is what you need to know, right? So for instance, I know that I have nodes in gate 12, gate 11, gate 45, and gate 26. I have 12 and 11 as my design nodes, and I have 45, 26 as my personality nodes. So what this means is that I can essentially um, look at 12, 11, 45, and 26 and look for stars that are So let's just do 12. So I go to gate 12, and I see that it's from 22 degrees, 37 minutes, 30 seconds of Gemini to 28 degrees, 15 minutes, 0 seconds of Gemini. So I have 22 to 28, roughly, of Gemini. So now what I can do is I can go look at the fixed stars. And you can find various websites that have the fixed star lists. And you can then see where they are. Um, I guess it means longitudinal order. Yeah, here we go. Longitudinal order. So we go to Gemini. We're in Taurus here. This is Taurus. And we move on to Gemini. And we saw that, what was it? It was tw uh, 22 to 28. Right, so now we look for where we get to 22 degrees. So we have a lot of stars in this range. We have Heka, Alnatak, Alheka, Saif, Wazen, Polaris. Polaris is probably the biggest one. Beetle, Beetlegeis, and Minkalanon. So Polaris is probably going to be the biggest one that's within that range, that's within gate 12. Now the other thing though is that because we know that we have this whole range over six lines, you can divide this by six and you can see that it's a little less than one degree for each line. So we see 22, 23, 24, 25. You know, I'm on the third line, so I'm roughly 25 degrees. So I'm actually not as, as close to Polaris as I am to Wazen. 
wasn't in safe. Now, this is also not taking into account uh, distance from the ecliptic, that is latitudinal distance. This is only longitudinal. So there's something else to take into consideration. But yeah, I mean, if you want to continue this investigation on your own, this is at least a good place to start. What I would do is, as I was saying, go into your Ray V. Ching, go to the gates that you have, find, you know, find the, look, this actually tells you of the line there. So that's great. So I can go, yeah, I have 12 and 11, three. So I have 24 to 25 degrees of Gemini and Sagittarius are going to be two of my nodal points. Just like I can see, yeah, see the Gemini there. So um, yeah, and what you're gonna do is then you can, you can kind of see what stars are in that particular region of the sky. You can also check how far they are off the ecliptic. What that means is, you know, obviously, you might be born with a star conjunct along the ecliptic, but the star itself is actually pretty far off. Um, so it's not really conjunct on one dimension, it's only conjunct on the other. So in any case, uh, I hope this has been interesting for folks who want to try this at home. I'm going to switch back now to the crash course on stars. We can continue for a little bit here. All right, so back to the crash course, crash course. The design nodes. The great influence of the stars in one's life is only something that can be recognized ultimately through one's own correctness, because where they have their deepest impact is in our design node conditioning. Sorry, positioning, the design node position. So that's interesting. So I actually was looking at my design nodes. They are 12 and 11. Um, my, my design node uh, my north node is 12 and my south node is 11. So in that sense, it is most fascinating to look at those stars that are within the range of what are your design nodes, because this is alignment information, which literally establishes the right direction for the movement of the individual vehicle, how we operate in that environment. And so, um, yeah, just to kind of go back to where I was, let me see. So I was seeing that Saif, Saif was one of them. And Wazen, I don't know much about Cypher Wazen, but those are both kind of the closest in the range. Um, these are in Orion. Saif is the right leg of the hunter on the Uranium Mirrors drawing. Um, or Saif can be the sword tip that extends to the right leg. The astrological influences. The giant Orion was created out of ox hide. It has quite a, quite a bit here, so I mean, I can read about this. According to Ptolemy, the bright stars, with the exception of Betelgeuse and Bellatrix, are like Jupiter and Saturn, giving a strong, dignified nature, self-confidence, as well as inconstancy, arrogance, violence, and so on. So, you know, these are obviously the um, associations from a seven-centered time. The Kabbalists associate it with Aleph in the first tarot, uh, the first trump card, the Magus, or the Juggler, it says here. The astrological influence of the constellation Orion, uh, alert minds, agile bodies, souls prompt to respond to, to duty's call. This is translated from Manilius, first century AD. Unflagging energy. Yeah, so I mean, these are all very like seven centered versions of it, but it's still interesting to see. So that's Wazen, no, that was Saif. Then Wazen is also so Wazen is part of Canis Major, interestingly. So Canis Major and Orion have a little bit of overlap then. And yeah, the astrological influences of Wazen, a gentle, kind, timid, innocent, self-sacrificing nature with strength of spirit, bringers of good news. It represents the dove sent by Noah from the Ark. Oh, this is the astrological influence of the constellation Columba, which I guess it's also a part of. I see, Wazen is like the heart of Columba. And it's also in Canis Major. So it's the back of the dove, Columba. And so that's interesting because Jonah means dove. Jonah's Hebrew for dove. So that is an interesting correlation there. So, okay, so that's for my north node on the design side. Now let's go to the south node. I need to look in Sagittarius now for a 22 to 20. Eight Sagittarius, roughly around 25, 26, is kind of where my third line is. I see Aculeus and Etamin. Let's see Aculeus. This is in Scorpius. 
Oh, I was totally wrong about Canis Major. They have a Canis Major page on every single page on Constellations of War Words. So Canis Major does not overlap with um, with the dove, with Columba. It was simply, which would be kind of weird. Why would the dog and the dove overlap? But um, apparently it doesn't, or it doesn't seem like it anyway. Um, it's just on every page. Okay, so Aculeus looks like it's in the tail of Scorpio. It's an open cluster of stars above the stinger of Scorpio. The Acadians called Scorpio the stinger, the place where one bows down. And it is a striking curve of stars lying in a dark portion of the Milky Way, forming the tail of the scorpion. And the resemblance of Aculeus to Achilles is probably not a coincidence. The stinging seraph, the source of the word serpent, meaning burning or venom, or scorpion, strikes in the akel, or heel, the Achilles heel. I never realized that the term heel itself came from Achilles. Achilles. That's great. And this is from Isaac Mosin, author of the Word Dictionary, Edenic Biblical Hebrew. Ptolemy makes the following observations. The bright stars in front of the body of Scorpio have an effect similar to Mars, partly to Saturn similar to Mars and Jupiter. The tail are more like Saturn and Venus. Those in the stinger, like Mercury and Mars. And it's associated with the 16th tarot trump card, the tower, which I'm seeing, yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay, so it's interesting. I would like to, to see how these tarot cards kind of align, like that would be an interesting area of investigation. The star Aculeus, of the nature of Mars and the moon, it affects eyesight. Uh, this is from Robson. It's one of the blind stars. Hmm. And there's a tendency to be either the Hellfire and Damnation Brigade or take up a fierce anti-religious stance. This is from the living stars of Eric Morse. Yeah, so, you know, the associations that were given of the stars are not that helpful, right? I mean, maybe we can deconstruct them, but it's so hard to deconstruct them into a nine-centered language or a nine-centered understanding. Um, but it is still at least interesting to see like what are the stars that we're associated with. For me, it's Achilles, and it's also apparently Wazen, Columba, the Dove. These are alignment stars for me. These are stars within one degree of, um, you know, these, these, are, these are stars that are very much aligned with my nodes. So the great influence is something to be recognized through correctness because it has its deepest impact in our design node positioning. So it's most fascinating to look at what are in the design nodes because this is alignment information, which literally establishes the right direction for the movement of the individual vehicle. In context with the stars and their influence, it's good to know that the design link node is opened up to the personality influence. And here's a quote from Ra. Now personality influence is what stars represent the linking system, the connection between the design north node and the personality south node, provides a way in which the mind can influence or try to influence the vehicle itself. It can't change the life, but it can influence its direction. We know that it will change it if it's not self. What we're going to get to see is that this is one of the ways in which the linking system, the nodal linking system, breaks down and that it provides a way in which the mind can influence or try to influence the vehicle itself. But here we're looking at the other way around. We're looking at the potential of a star as an example being aligned to what is an influence in your life. The body is the life. So I think what Ra is saying here, um, you know, among other things, is simply that this is where the mind can really screw up the life by changing our direction. There is a mental influence here, right? So it's an interesting, interesting way. There's a direct path for, it's kind of like um, Seinfeld had the joke, he said, there's day man and there's night man. And they're very different people. Nightman wants to stay up late and drink and go out to bars. Dayman has to wake up early to go to work. Well, you know, Dayman can't really do much against Nightman. You know, Dayman, the most Dayman can do is lose his job and then not have enough money to pay to go out. Because Nightman is pretty much, other than that, impervious to anything Dayman tries. Nightman can stay up late, whatever. Dayman can't affect him, you know. So. It's the same kind of thing, you know, night man and day man. The conscious mind kind of messing with the trajectory of the body. 
In short, in a natal chart, the design north node may be aligned with a certain star, and while the nodes are moving slowly, much more people have the same aligning, all influenced directly by that same data stream, because they move slowly. So in that context, as Ra says, stars have armies. Stars have soldiers, worker bees, devotees, you know, uh, devotees, like a Krishna devotee. The more, while stars move very slowly seen from Earth, and a nodal cycle takes 18.6 years, there may be three or four generations with the same direct influence. So yeah, that's what he's saying is because it's 18 and a half year, um, and really every nine and a quarter years is when you get the same two stars, just you know, one point and the other, at the North Node and the South Node. So really, I mean, you can end up with eight generations roughly, or I guess he's saying maybe not eight generations, but let's see. You can basically end up with people every nine years who have the same star influences, and every 18 and a half years who have the exact same north and south node influences. So yeah, you can end up with four generations in that sense. So it seems not only about finding your star, but with that also realizing that you are looking for your family. Generational nodal connections are probably more important than anything else as the way in which wisdom moves. Yeah, this is an almost direct quote. Uh, from Ra in his work on stars, where what Jan is saying here is that, you know, what Ra said is that this is how information travels. Intergenerational information travels through nodal connections. Either your nodes are conjunct their nodes, or your nodes are conjunct their sun, earth, and vice versa. And of course, it's not your blood family. In another way, connections between sun, earth of one and nodes of the other always means there's a special connection. And that means whether the node is on the same gate as the sun or earth, or whether the node is in a harmonic gate across from it that's open to it. Anything dealing with the nodes is dealing with the movement of your life force. It's dealing literally with the history of your geometry. So anything relative to your nodes is always bringing forces into your life, if you have these kind of alignments. After what is said here, and this is under the title Practice, it may be interesting to investigate what star eventually was on your design north node at birth. Realize every year takes a 0 0.84 degrees, sorry, minute, that's 0.84 seconds, excuse me, less than one minute move of any star to be interpolated 67 years for a line. The easiest is to use a star list. I use this one, producing lists of any year you choose, for example, your year of birth. You look at your tropical position matching the gate and line for the zodiacal degrees, see page 117 or the Ray V. Ching. So that's nice. So he actually includes the lines here. So, so yeah, let me just see and make sure that this is actually the same. Um, this should be the same thing. Yeah, this just lets you, I see, this just lets you calculate the stars. Yeah, so same to same deal. Nice. Okay, so I think we're going to stop here. Next time we'll start up with the nature of stars in Ra's footsteps. We'll look at Aldebaran. Uh, for now, this is a good place to stop. Yeah, so I guess for me, it's going to be Columba the Dove. That's, you know, it's funny, my design north node on gate 12, line 3, is Columba the Dove, which my name Jonah means dove, literally. So that's already kind of a cute little, a cute little wink. So in any case, I'd love to hear your investigations. Do you have any resources for the stars? Is, do you know of anybody out there doing nine-centered you know, analysis? Or is all of this taken from Hellenistic astrology and Ptolemy and Robson and those? Or do you have any favorite resources for the fixed stars? I'd love to hear people's comments. If, if you have any insight into your own design north node star, what star is on your design north node, I'd love to hear your interpretation of that. And if you have any interesting synchronicities or anything at all. Um, thanks for watching.